Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, June 18th, and joining me virtually is Representative Chu Zhang, Representative Steve Sandal, and Senator Susan Kent. I wanted to thank you all for joining me today. And I wanted to ask you, Susan, um, with the shift from the stay at home order to the stay safe order, um, the, there's been a new special session that's kind of been brought up starting last Friday, June 12th. So I wanted to ask you if you kind of fill us in on what was being proposed or any upcoming bills and what you've been experiencing for the past week now. Thank you, Elena, for bringing us together. It's always good to, to talk about what's going on in the Capitol. Um, so there are sort of a few different buckets here. The, the transition, or as Governor Walls puts it, the turning up the dial on our um, economy and opening up businesses and trying to bring people back into um, some semblance of normal activity um, is, is ongoing. And that has been a process that he and his administration have been working through. He maintains his executive peacetime powers, um, and uh, without getting too much in the weeds, it's vague in statute how that happens, and so to his credit, he is being very deferential to the legislature. So those expire every 30 days, and so the, the legislature comes back in during, if we're not already in session, which we had been, but now we're, we've come back in because as of June 12th, um, that order needed to be renewed. And so we have the option as a legislature to end his peacetime authority. Um, and so, but it, the legislature as a whole um, uh, has, has extended it uh, for another 30 days. So that's why we're together. But because of that, that's part of why we didn't get all, and that and the COVID schedule, the, the disruption that we had in the legislature. That's why we didn't get a few major things done. We did get some good things done. Um, uh, 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 affordable and accessible insulin, um, tobacco 21, a number of good things we did get done during regular session and obviously addressing COVID. Um, but we didn't get a bonding bill done. We didn't get a tax bill done. There's some federal dollars that need to be allocated um, to deal with COVID both at the local level and at the state level. So we have work that we still need to do in addition to um, renewing the peacetime authority for the governor. I know it's been a crazy time for not only everyone in Minnesota, everyone in the country, but especially for you trying to navigate all this new, trying to get all these new laws passed and all this other things on top of COVID. So I appreciate you giving that update and continuing to work as hard as all of you are. And speaking to that, I wanted to ask you, Representative Zhang, um, also along the lines with that new shift to the stay safe order, I wanted to ask you kind of what the House has been focused on working on during this time especially when we were at the stay and hold order to the stay safe order now? I'm still thinking to that week, um, you know, when we were starting the, sh the shutdown and the lockdown and what, what a scary and uncertain time it was. Uh, and, you know, being a freshman legislator, you know, you just don't, don't know what to expect. Um, but, you know, we've been focusing on, you know, trying to get, uh, support for those that are seeking unemployment, uh, folks in the community that had to close down their business or shut down their business, uh, some that are balancing different staff uh, levels. And so we're uh, working on that. We worked on some of the tax bills in the tax committee, uh, wrapping those up uh, at the end of the session. Um, and, you know, there's a couple of things that I had for my district here. Uh, in the bonding bill, and you know, it didn't get passed in the session, but uh, we're looking to see what we can do it here in special session. Um, but that, I think that's that's what we've been we, I've been working on, uh, and I don't know if uh, Steve ha has anything else you might want to add. Well, when we when we uh, started um, uh, the special session, um, our speaker Melissa Hortman said there really are four things to do. One is we have to uh, uh, keep working on the issue of uh, uh, related to the COVID shutdown. There's two suggested uh, issues of unemployment, uh, aid to small businesses, uh, attention to uh, those individuals who have uh, been threatened or or hurt badly by uh, losing their job and uh, being furloughed. That's a uh, uh, a really important issue. Second of all, um, the uh, uh, the issue of policing, law enforcement, and um, the accountability within uh, uh, the law enforcement community. That's a huge issue. Our committee on public safety has been working for probably three weeks straight through, trying to um, uh, develop a, a package of bills that will address those issues, not only the technical issues of, of policing, but also trying to build the confidence of, of the community in um, um, our dedication to uh, their interests and uh, 
uh, their belief and confidence in, uh, in law enforcement. We also have to face uh, the, uh, the problems of rebuilding those communities that were, that were damaged during the, the, the destruction three weeks ago. The Lake Street area, the West Broadway area, and the Midway area in St. Paul. Um, uh, we put together a bill uh, called the Promise Bill, which is now about $150 million, and I think probably in growing, that's going to try to get money into those communities as quickly as possible. Uh, that's a, uh, an important priority for us. If you've driven down Lake Street or West Broadway or into the Midway, you know how devastating that, uh, that period of time is. And, and the other issue is the, the bonding bill, um, sometimes called the Jobs Bill. Uh, during the early part of the session, I think the DFLers were optimistic that we might be able to reach maybe two and a half billion dollars of, of projects, which would have been terrific because of uh, the jobs that it brings. Our uh, expectations were lowered, probably to about 2.1 billion. But as Susan knows, um, the, the Senate uh, Republicans are, are far less willing to uh, take advantage of these low interest rates and the real opportunities that we have to put people to work. And they're talking about 1.3 billion. So those four areas uh, um, are are in front of us. And, you know, it, it's fascinating to talk about, and I suppose we can talk about them sometime in the future, but uh, Susan's really in a tough uh, spot. Um, Two has been very active in all of this. Uh, I've been kind of uh, watching from the sidelines as my committees have, have kind of finished their work, but it is a, a fascinating time. And I hope that uh, your viewers can uh, pay close attention and hope our conversation can bring some light to it. It is, by the way, great uh, of you. I really appreciate it uh, to bring us together and uh, with uh, um, with your audience. It's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoy speaking with all of you, and I appreciate you all providing this update. I think it's very important that people of Minnesota see who's in their district, who's leading them, and who's the one kind of making these bills and trying to push through to make a better future for all of us. And I know right now is very uncertain times. So speaking to kind of that uncertainty and where we're at, I wanted to ask kind of each one of you if there was anything else that you'd like to bring up or add or anything else that you'd like to say to Minnesotans. So I'll start with you, Senator Kent. Uh, well, thank you, Elena. There, this has been um, just an incredible year. You know, I mean, we started out in February and the beginning of session and we got our budget forecast and we were still projecting a $1.5 billion surplus. And then COVID became such a reality and um, has affected so many people. I think we all probably know people who have had um, significant losses in their families and their lives as a result of this and their livelihoods. Um, and it is something that we're gonna have to figure out how we work with and live with for, for some amount of time. Uh, and so we take that responsibility very seriously to keep people safe and also to make sure that, um, that, that people can stay economically safe as well. Um, and then um, on Memorial Day, everyone was so shocked and horrified to see George Floyd murdered at the knee of a Minneapolis police officer. And um, that, I think that has been um, such a huge moment uh, for so many people. And I've heard it so loud and clear in our community that this has gone too far and that this is not just one case, that this is emblematic of, of things that have happened for a long time. It's just happened, the way this one unfolded for eight minutes and 46 seconds on a video um, was just, um, it, it just it just made it all so abundantly clear. And so I am really proud to work in the legislature. We the, There is a group of people of color and indigenous people who have formed what they call the Posse Caucus, P-O-C-I, People of Color and Indigenous Caucus. And they have really been leading on these conversations. These are not new ideas that are being presented during this special session. These are bills that have been offered for years. It has been very hard to make change. Um, and it's important that we implement things and then have accountability. There's a lot of talk, for example, about banning chokeholds and similar types of behaviors. Well, the fact is they're already banned in a lot of places, um, but without accountability, um, there's, and without consequences, it doesn't mean anything. So we're really committed, and we hear loud and clear from people in our community that, um, that it is time that we make some meaningful change and really transform um, policing and criminal justice for everybody, but particularly for our black community and for communities of color. I absolutely agree. And I, I, I thank you for giving that update as well as the new caucus too, that I wasn't aware that that was a new thing too. So that's great for all our audience as well as just people in Minnesota to know that there are being efforts put into place now that are very important and moving forward. 
And I wanted to ask you, uh, Representative Sandell, if there was anything that you'd like to address or let Minnesotans know yourself. I wrote a note to uh, some students last week about um, issues that they had raised about um, uh, uh, issues of race and racism in schools. And um, uh, they were concerned that the, the school board hadn't, hadn't heard their, their voice. And I said that, that sensitive issues are really difficult to deal with in, in public meetings. Um, but these are the times that we have to do that. I uh, reminded of these are the times to try men's souls. Well, these certainly are the time to try men and women's soul, all of us. Um, race and racism has become a um, um, front and center to our conversations now. It's been a topic which has kind of conveniently uh, been ignored for a long while. Um, I'm, I've, I've grown up through the uh, civil rights movement and, and uh, through periods of, of, of expanding human rights and human uh, through legislation, affordable, ac uh, affordable action, uh, Title IX legislation, uh, and each one of those laws moves a little bit further toward for equality. But this is really an issue of the heart, Elena. I, I, and, it, and for me, it's very difficult to, um, to find a way to um, um, be effective in talking to my constituents and to uh, raising my hand for votes. I, I support the Posse Caucus, of course. I support the ideas of, of moving forward and, 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 and accepting and expressing issues of racism. Um, if we believe Black Lives Matter, we need to act that way. If we believe that all people should have equal access to our, our uh, uh, the opportunities that this nation provides, we have to act that way. And that's, uh, that's gonna be tough. It's tough for me, it's gonna be tough for all of our constituents, but uh, um, those are, I mean, there, there's the, there's, there are all the details of legislation, all the hearings, all the meetings, but it's really an issue of the heart and, and uh, if we're going to move forward that uh, we have to examine our heart and uh, see how, uh, uh, and, and uh, put our courage together and move forward. I think you put that beautifully, you put our courage, courage forward and continue to move on and in a positive and way that's beneficial to all Minnesotans moving forward. And just speaking to that as well, I wanna ask you, Representative Zhang, uh, if you have anything that you'd like to add personally or for your constituents as well. Senator Kent and Steve has certainly put it uh, in uh, perspective and um, provide a lot of uh, great things to say about what, you know, what, what we aspire to. Um, I am one of the members of the Posse Caucus, uh, you know, ever since the, uh, Memorial Weekend and uh, us in, in the Posse Caucus, we've been working on about 18, 19 bills um, on, you know, police reform, accountability, uh, public safety reform. And so, you know, we're trying to see if we can get some of those through um, here in the special session. Uh, but other than that, also, there's a few uh, constituents in my district that had owned um, businesses either in, you know, Minneapolis or uh, in St. Paul where some of the rioting occurred. And I, I received some calls that some of their businesses were hit. And so uh, we went with, um, we had the, uh, a couple of, uh, you know, legislators go down to St. Paul and Minneapolis to kind of see uh, some of the damages that that have occurred, and so uh, we we've been working in tax committee on some bills uh, to provide you know tax relief or some form of assistance to businesses to kind of help them get back on their feet. And we we certainly uh, you know want to come together as Minnesotans and to heal together. You know we've dealt with a one, once in 100 years pandemic. And then we had, uh, you know, the Memorial Weekend incident and then the rioting and um, National Guard coming out. And so it certainly uh, has been quite a first term as a first term legislator. And so uh, we're, we're trying to uh, heal, you know, Minnesota back and you know, rebuild it. So uh, it's great to have people like Senator Kent and Representative Sandell to kind of lean on and see their leadership too. I really appreciate that update and the fact that there's 18 and 19 bills 
being proposed and that they've already been in the works for some time even is really important for us to continue to follow and hopefully able to make that change for these uncertain times. And I really appreciate you all providing these updates and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Alanis. It's great seeing you. Thank you guys. Have a good night.